What would happen if one day Barbie was adopted by a vampire family? Subscribe to Wolf Fairy Tale to follow Barbie's story. Barbie is a young orphaned girl who lives in an orphanage. Because of her exceptional beauty, she was adored by everyone. Many people want to adopt her, but Barbie continues to decline their offers. She harbors a longing for the day when her grandmother, Ruth, will have the means to take her away. Every month, she is visited by her grandmother. Keep our meetings a secret, my dear. Huh? When will I see you again, Grandma? Lately, I've been feeling so peculiar. I fear I might be losing my mind. Be patient, my dear. You will soon find the answers you seek. However, Grandma has been absent for quite some time, and instead, Barbie encounters an enigmatic and eerie family. The father is Jordan, the mother is Sandra, and their daughter is Buffy. They openly express their desire to adopt her. No way! Where is my Grandma? It turns out they are descendants of Grandma Ruth, and also Barbie's true family. What's even more astonishing is that they are all vampires. Sadly, Grandma Ruth passed away due to an attack from a rival vampire clan. They lost a key member and are now facing a great danger. She left a will, bequeathing all her assets to Barbie. From now on, Barbie must be adopted into the family. She is the heir. Barbie went from one surprise to another. However, to protect the legacy her grandmother left behind, Barbie decided to go along with this family. Is this a vampire castle? It's so terrifying! Quickly, drink this! It will help reveal the true forms of vampires! Vampires don't cast reflections in mirrors. Huh? Huh? Henceforth, Barbie won't be able to gaze upon her own beauty. Huh? Mm. Ah! Why am I lying in a coffin like this? It turns out, vampires sleep during the day and are active at night. Alright, I'll just have to endure it, but this room is exceedingly unsightly. Although Barbie is the leader, she finds herself isolated within her family. Huh? <laughs> huh? <gasps> You're excessively tender-hearted and indecisive. You're hardly fit for a leadership role. Barbie can even perceive their emotions as colors, thanks to her unique ability. After observing for many days, Barbie realizes that this family consistently radiates somber emotions, huh? as if they must suppress their true selves to appear serious. This sharply contrasts with Barbie's confidence. There's something on your face. What? My beauty? <laughs> she disregards their taunts and continues to express her uniqueness. <laughs> <laughs> Dress stylishly and unconventionally. <laughs> and live in harmony with her true nature. Further, intensifying the friction between her and her family. Bobby cannot accept their dark and apathetic way of life. 
nor does she wish to engage in hunting and consuming huh? gruesome food like them. <sighs> Conversely, they are incapable of comprehending Barbie's flamboyant sense of aesthetics. Mr. Jordan and Mrs. Sandra are very strict with their daughter. Arda, how can we defeat our enemies like this? Buffy has grown indifferent towards everything. Only Barbie knows the truth. And perhaps Buffy, like Sandra and Jordan, they are also imposing themselves too much into a mold. Each day, Barbie and her family train to combat the attacks of rival vampire clans. However, despite her relentless efforts, Barbie is unable to match their strength. Consequently, Barbie concentrates on her other unique abilities. Come on, Barbie. If you persist in this manner, Grandma Ruth's legacy will crumble. Barbie firmly believes that they are making the mistake of imposing themselves without exploring their individual personalities. Living like this brings them no happiness. Barbie is determined to help everyone reconcile and express themselves more freely. She presents Buffy with an instrument, recognizing her passion for music. Barbie's uninhibited expression of herself begins to have a positive influence on Buffy. Barbie huh? aids Sandra in discovering her love for flowers and assists Jordan in pursuing his passion for research and reading without constraint. <laughs> Gradually, the family becomes more harmonious. Barbie encourages everyone to freely express their unique traits. They develop together. On the night of the village festival, Barbie encourages Buffy to perform for the villagers. Huh? Mm. I doubt the villagers will appreciate me. Huh? Mm. Sandra was once subjected to mistreatment by the villagers due to her eerie appearance. Sandra does not want Buffy to endure being regarded as an outcast as she once did. Huh? Yet you possess hmm. genuine musical talent. Do not allow anything to hinder you. Hmm. Consequently, Buffy musters the courage to perform in front of the villagers. And the entire family <laughs> joyfully dances together. Huh? Ruth is no more, and there is no one left to shield you. Surrender all your assets to us. Everyone, go ahead. I shall obstruct their huh? path. <gasps> you shall not huh? seize our abode. We shall employ our full might to combat them. I do not believe that is a wise course of action. The strength of a vampire is contingent upon their unique abilities. Huh? Hmm? For instance, Barbie's strength has been unveiled through her commitment to living authentically. Therefore, let each of you harness your individual passions. There is no need for violence. They argue amongst themselves as the invaders draw near, threatening to breach the door. Seize your quarreling at once! Ruth's apparition recounts tales of the past. Her daughter, Barbie's mother, was much like her. Why do you persist in eccentric attire? Can you not behave in a more conventional manner? I no longer wish to lead such a life, Mother. I aspire to explore the world and spread positivity to all. Discontinue the use of that emotion-reading ability. It's futile. 
This marked the final meeting between Ruth and her daughter. <laughs> Ruth had secretly searched for her for a long time. However, in the end, she discovered that Barbie's mother had passed away, leaving only her granddaughter behind. Ruth was profoundly saddened and remorseful. The generations of imposition and repression had caused her descendants to suffer. Ruth had protected Barbie and included her in the will, believing that with her benevolence and freedom to express her true self, Barbie could bring about change within the family. It was also my plan to introduce Barbie to the new family and continue developing the legacy I left behind. I understand now. Thank you, Mother. And thank you, Barbie. Mm. <laughs> they all proceed to follow Barbie's advice. Sandra uses carnivorous plants to deter the invading forces. Buffy plays her instrument, causing them to dance uncontrollably. Just then, Jordan cleverly leads them into the traps he has set. Barbie, with her extraordinary ability, manipulates their thoughts and compels them to depart. From that point forward, Barbie lives happily with her new family. They respect each other's preferences. Petite cakes are not useless, and those who appear peculiar and unique are not to be feared. In the realm of precious gemstones, the diamond lineage stood as the mightiest. They were magnificent gemstones, <laughs> radiating a luminous beauty and possessing an unparalleled durability. Alas, a volcanic cataclysm a century passed. King Yellow Diamond and Queen Red Diamond gave their all to forge an unyielding diamond barrier. With their departure, they left behind two unfortunate daughters, Sparkle and Pink Diamond. Sparkle, the youngest, had reached maturity. Yet, she remained a raw diamond, bearing a prominent crack from the calamity long ago. This flaw afflicted her with profound self-consciousness and a sense of estrangement. In contrast to Sparkle, her elder sister Pink Diamond epitomized both beauty and authority in the kingdom. She ascended the throne, succeeding her parents and ruled over the gem realms for ages. Pink Diamond was demanding on Sparkle, believing the crack restrained her potential. Sparkle hastened to the fiery forge for training, transforming to a diamond to erase that blemish, the lineage's bane. Sister, you're truly overbearing. Despite relentless effort, success eluded her no matter how hard she tried. The tale began one day when Sparkle stumbled upon an ancient tome. Could a very volcano sealed by our parents possess true magic? A magic that could mend a scar on my face? With mm. excitement, Sparkle shared her discovery with Pink <gasps> Diamond. No, that place is treacherous. Many have perished due to the creature residing there. <laughs> but Sparkle's desire to prove herself and forge her own path propelled her forward. So that very night, she journeyed to the volcano's peak, accompanied by Emerald and Sapphire. They too were gemstones marked by imperfections, which had led to their isolation. They found a way to manipulate the diamond soldiers. But if we don't, we'll forever be the ones looked down upon. But if we don't, we'll forever be the ones looked down upon. Fear not, Sparkle. The volcano has slumbered undisturbed for ages. There's no reason for it to erupt now. Indeed, all we need to do is go there, mend our bodies' cracks, then return to restore the original diamond barrier. Having deliberated, Emerald, mm. Sapphire and Sparkle pooled their strengths, drawing energy from the moonlight to conjure a resounding explosion. Huh? Oh. Huh? Hmm. What? 
What is this? Hmm? It must be the doing of those nefarious trio! <gasps> Calm down, everyone! Hmm. Alone, she couldn't mend this barrier, for it had been built by her parents. And it required a great deal of magic to rebuild. <sighs> Soldiers, protect the barrier. I will seek out the other three. Hmm. Oh? Emerald, Sapphire and Sparkle journeyed through the night to reach the fiery mountain. <gasps> hmm? Oh? Huh? Emerald? Sapphire? Help me secure the rope! I will plunge into the fiery mountain! Huh? Hmm. <laughs> Here, she beheld a slumbering beast, pressed beneath colossal boulders. <gasps> Sparkle <gasps> kept swaying gracefully on the delicate thread. It made uh. Emerald and Sapphire struggle tirelessly to keep her suspended high above. Regrettably, Sparkle brushed against jagged rocks, inadvertently releasing the monster and awakening it from slumber. The lava also awaited its moment to erupt. Emerald and Sapphire were pulled down by the thread along with Sparkle. All three bore visible scars and wounds. The temperature continued to rise, and if they stayed too long, they would melt away. The monster lunged to attack. The pink diamond appeared and conjured a giant shield. Why didn't you listen to me and ventured into danger on your own? Did you know that both our parents sacrificed themselves to build the barrier against lava? Ah! Huh? Have you ever been rejected or pushed away, sister, so that you could understand how I feel? You've always made me feel unworthy of being a member of the Diamond family, always self-conscious about my flaws. Once I repair this imperfection, I'll have the potential to cultivate into a diamond. I want you to be proud of me. Is that wrong? <laughs> the monstrous creature swung its shield, charging forward and prepared to breathe fire at Pink Diamond. However, the monster was unharmed and suddenly soared high into the sky, leaving the volcanic mountain and heading toward the village. The lava had already risen quite high. This volcano could erupt at any moment. Behind them, waves of lava were rushing into the kingdom fiercely. Emerald and Sapphire, along with other gemstones, temporarily built a wall to cover the hole. Meanwhile, Pink Diamond tried to contain the monster's rampage. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pink Diamond tried to contain the monster's rampage. A stone mask on the creature's head fell off, revealing a crack. Release the innocent ones! Release them. It's all your fault that I became like this. A hundred years ago, that creature was Quartz, a rainbow quartz living in the Gemstone Kingdom. However, an accident left him with a scar on his face. The people of that time drove him away, including the King and Queen. They all believed he would bring shame to this kingdom. Quartz went to the volcanic mountain to repair the scar on his face. But his actions unintentionally led to the volcano's eruption. And he became trapped under massive boulders. Rainbow Quartz remained there for months, and his resentment grew, slowly transforming him into a monster. Quartz merged with the volcanic mountain and gained control over it. Quartz believed that the gemstone people only cared about appearances. So, he raised the lava higher, wanting to wipe them all out. Pink Diamond realized the truth, and she looked at him and her entire people with sorrow. Just then, Sparkle soared in like a divine being. But she had transformed into a new entity, a rainbow diamond unlike any before. Sparkle, 
You're still alive! When I fell into the lava, I endured a lot of pain and extreme heat. But it was the scar on my face that absorbed all the lava's power and unlocked the powerful rainbow diamond form. Never hide your imperfections, for they do not make us weaker, but stronger! The gemstone people looked at each other in confusion. They reluctantly apologized to Sparkle and also removed the adhesive bandages on themselves. Revealing that they too had numerous scratches just like him. After that accident, not a single gemstone citizen in the kingdom was without flaws. But they all mm. chose to hide their scars with adhesive <gasps> bandages, fearing they would be looked down upon. But thanks to Sparkle, they realized their mistake and rushed to embrace the creature, spreading love to him. <laughs> We're sorry! Touched by everyone's love, the monster's body cracked open. The man abandoned his monstrous form to return to his original Rainbow Quartz self. I'm sorry. I used to endure harsh expectations from my parents, which is why I placed a heavy burden on you. Both sisters <laughs> understood each other's hearts. From then on, the Gemstone Kingdom no longer discriminated against external flaws. They welcomed Rainbow Quartz back into the kingdom. Sparkle and Pink Diamond became queens and created an egalitarian society. Everyone lived happily together. The story ends here today. Let's hit the subscribe button for Woa Fairy Tale to discover more wonderful and heartwarming stories. Look, the girl is hugging the person in black and rushing into the magic circle. Why is she doing that? If you want to know what happened, then follow Woa Fairy Tales right away. Once upon a time in a beautiful town, there lived a happily married couple mm. who had a lovely <laughs> daughter together. Our little daughter is as beautiful as the round moon. Let's name her Luna. <laughs> little Luna lived in the love and care of her parents until she was 10 years old. One day, when it was gloomy and pouring rain, her father put on a black coat and came to Luna to give her a necklace with strange and intricate engravings. Then, he walked out the door and left. Dad! Dad! My dear daughter, I will be back with you soon. While I'm away, please take care of your mother in my place. Despite mm -hmm. Luna's mother crying and trying to stop him, Luna's father just turned back to look at his wife and daughter, smiled, and then disappeared behind the curtain of rain. Due to missing and longing for her husband, Luna's mother got really sick and hard to cure. Luna also fell into depression and melancholy because of this. She spent her days moping around the house and not communicating with anyone. Their lives remained bleak like that for six years until Luna's 16th birthday. As the birthday candles were lit on the table, Luna's mother tried to sing a song for her daughter. But before she could do anything, the candle suddenly went out. Outside the window, there was a blurry shadow hovering back and forth, as if waiting to break open the window. At that moment, the necklace around Luna's neck glimmered, causing the shadow to startle and retreat, saving both of them from danger. This is no good, Luna. We have to move away from here right now. Although Luna didn't want to, she had to follow her mother. Before leaving, she turned back to take one last look at their old house as a farewell and also as the beginning of the exciting adventures that awaited her in her life. On the day Luna and her mother moved, a kind neighboring boy helped them carry their belongings. Thank you so much. Do you live nearby? Would you like to come in for some cookies? <laughs> My name is Jack. I live right next door. If you need any help, just let me know. Don't hesitate. 
I really like cookies. <laughs> Since Jack came into their lives, the atmosphere in the house became happier and brighter. Luna also opened up more, talked more, and the two of them quickly became best friends. Jack appeared like a ray of light that warmed Luna and her mother's hearts. Since moving into this house, Luna often had nightmares. Sometimes she woke up in the middle of the night and saw a shadow hovering back and forth outside her window. I'm really scared. I have had nightmares where a shadow is chasing me and when I reach the third floor, I wake up. Then there must be a mystery in this house. Do you want to explore the third floor with me? Sure. Let's go together. Luna and Jack were determined that day to sneak up to the third floor, where there was only one room. When they entered, they saw that the room was filled with old dusty objects. As they ventured deeper into the room, they discovered a hidden door tucked behind some chairs and wooden crates. They approached the door and opened it, revealing a staircase leading up to the attic. Walking into the room, the two were amazed because there were countless interesting things in the attic room. They were immersed in those objects until they heard a noise in the corner of the room and turned around and saw a little fairy. They screamed in terror and even the little fairy was scared and screamed. After all three of them calmed down, they cautiously approached each other. You must be little Luna, right? How do you know me? I am a fairy tasked with guarding this house. Your father spoke of you often, huh? as both he and your grandfather mm -hmm. were talented wizards. <laughs> I have a message to deliver to you two curious children. You must never venture into the nearby dark forest, for it is extremely dangerous. Huh? Two of them pretended to nod mm -hmm. and listen to the fairy's <laughs> warning. But that very night, out of curiosity, they sneaked out of the house and went to the nearby forest together. As soon as they were about to enter the forest, a barrier knocked them back. At that moment, a dark figure rushed towards them, intending to attack. Fortunately, the little fairy appeared in time to rescue them and chased away the dark figure. The little fairy breathed a sigh of relief and looked at them. Hmm. So what's the secret of this forest? <sighs> this forest is the guardian of the magical gem with infinite power. Your father hmm. also sacrificed huh? himself trying to protect this gem hmm. from the Devil King. Recently, I have sensed the return of the Devil King, and I am very worried. I wanted to enter the forest to get the gem first, but I couldn't get in. When Luna heard about her father, tears swelled up in her eyes. She tightly held onto her bracelet to prevent her tears from falling. Just huh? then, the bracelet lit up once again, and its huh? mysterious symbols appeared on the barrier. A door opened for them to enter the forest. The fairy initially wanted to go in alone, but Jack and Luna insisted on following him. The three of them cautiously walked together in the dark forest. Suddenly, carnivorous flowers sprouted from the ground and attacked them. They dodged and weaved, but the flowers kept multiplying and attacking. Jack came up with the idea of picking up sharp thorns and use them to cut the carnivorous plants, allowing them to escape from the battlefield. As they continued to move forward, they were blocked by a group of monstrous creatures with one eye, slimy bodies, and full of anger. The creatures attacked them relentlessly. 
but <gasps> Luna noticed a weak spot in their bellies. The three of them charged towards the weak spot and defeated the creatures. <laughs> the three of them continued on their journey and arrived at the cave where the gem was kept. As they entered, they saw a figure in black holding the gem. Thinking it was the Devil King, they charged towards the figure to attack. However, when the person turned around, Luna and the fairy were shocked to see that it was Luna's father. Luna burst into tears and ran towards her father, wanting to embrace him. However, at that moment, he was possessed by the devil and threw Luna away, charging towards the three of them to attack. Luna, I'll create a trap to contain the devil since he's still weak. You think of a way to lure him into it. Luna, I'll always be here by your side. Don't worry, we'll get through this together. Jack tried to distract the devil to make him less vigilant towards Luna. Taking advantage of the distraction, Luna rushed towards her possessed father and hugged him, leading him towards the seal created by the fairy. While hugging her father, Luna softly sang the lullaby that her father used to sing to her when she was little. As the lullaby ended, Luna's father suddenly regained consciousness. He let out a loud roar, breaking the seal and expelling the devil from his body. He looked towards Luna and held out his hand, holding both the magical gem and Luna's bracelet. They both emitted a bright light, creating a powerful force that destroyed the devil once and for all. After defeating the devil, the four of them walked out of the forest together. <laughs> Luna's mother was overjoyed to be reunited with her husband. <laughs> and from that day on, they lived happily ever after. Once upon a time in a magnificent and luxurious fairy tale kingdom, where gods, <laughs> demons, and humans coexisted, <clears throat> There was a beautiful and strong 18-year-old princess named Daisha. Daisha possessed a magical sword that was passed down to her by her mentor, the Sun God, which had the power to expel the souls of demons from possessed individuals. Furthermore, she also had a magical eye since birth that could be used as a gateway to trap evil spirits inside, which made everyone admire her. In particular, her third eye had the power to see the imminent death of any living thing she touched. Despite her abilities, Daisha was absolutely forbidden from interfering with the cycle of life and death. If she disobeyed, she would be punished by the gods. Although Daisha was strong, she had a weakness. She often became tired and could not use her third eye when exposed to bright light like the sun. In fact, she could even see a dark soul inside her at times, which made her very worried. Hmm. She asked her mother about this, but the queen only became sad and evaded the question. I cannot explain everything to you right now, my child. But if you want to use your magic eye during the day, remember to wear your cloak. I have also locked all the rooms containing treasures. So if you need anything, just tell me. Hmm. Daisha didn't want to make things more difficult for the queen, hmm. so she kept these questions to herself. Hmm. One day, the magic from Daisha's eye was completely reversed. Instead of being able to use it to control demons, it unleashed many evil spirits. Daisha didn't understand what was happening, so after she managed to deal with the demons with her magical sword, she hurried to find the queen to talk about it. Upon arrival, Daisha was horrified to see the Sun God angry, capturing the Queen. Excuse me, Sun God, why did you take my mother's soul away? Hmm. 
That's because yesterday you violated the prohibition when you used your third eye to save your mother. Therefore, I am here to punish your family. The Sun God recounted that yesterday, when Daisha bid farewell to the Queen to visit the Sun God Temple once a year, just like every year, her third eye suddenly lit up. It revealed to her that the Queen would pass away today due to old age and weakness. However, Daisha did not want to lose her only loved one, so she decided to change her mother's fate. Daisha quickly made an excuse to help her mother visit the Sun God Temple today, and then set out on her journey. After completing all the tasks at the temple, she happily returned home, but suddenly noticed a dark orb heading towards her. She quickly dodged and tried to catch the culprit, but he escaped. Nevertheless, Daisha was still happy that she had protected her mother from the wicked person today. However, the sun god witnessed Daisha's wrongful act, so we came here in person to punish both mother and daughter. Hmm. But all of this is my fault! My mother is completely innocent! Therefore, please forgive my mother and punish me in any way you want! Uh, since we are teacher and student, I will spare your mother's life if you promise never to repeat this mistake and agree to give me the Divine Sword. Because your impulsive and immature actions have disappointed me and I cannot easily forgive you. Therefore, I want to give the Divine Sword to someone who is more responsible than you in the future. For me, my mother's life is more important than anything else in the world, so I will give the Divine Sword to you! However, mm. when Daisha handed over the sword to the Sun God, he suddenly smirked mischievously and swung the sword mm. towards Daisha's third eye. Daisha froze and saw a three-eyed soul like herself escape from her body and collapse. The soul flew towards the mm. Sun God and was captured by him as his third eye in the surprise of Daisha. Finally, the day of revenge has come. Then, he broke his sword and transformed into a cruel demon king. It turned out that years ago, the younger brother of the demon king loved the queen so much that he agreed not to do anything wrong. Therefore, the demon king was very angry and wanted to destroy the couple, but his younger brother tried to use magic to seal him and passed away. Eighteen years later, the Demon King finally had enough power to escape the seal. But when he went to take revenge on the Queen, he found Daisha in the temple. The Demon Queen quickly recognized that Daisha's third eye was similar to that of his younger brother, and it was surely the daughter of that couple. Hmm. Hmm. If that kid is the hybrid child of the Queen and my younger brother, then that magical eye will represent the soul of the demon existing inside its body. Then, if I can release the power and dark soul of that kid, my magic will increase exponentially. <laughs> However, despite using every method to obtain the eye, the Demon King still could not easily achieve this ambition. He needed something that could separate Dish's dark soul from her body, and that was the Divine Sword. <laughs> Therefore, the Demon King had to apply a part of his black magic to the third eye, and silently harmed the Queen to force Daisha to hand over the sword. As soon as he obtained the treasure, the Demon King finally gained the magical eye. It turns out that because I have half of my soul as a demon, that's why I feel tired and see my dark soul every time I come into contact with the light? That's right. Your mother probably didn't want you to feel ashamed of your identity and wanted you to focus on defeating the demons, so she kept this a secret. However, I will let your mother and you witness how the kingdom, which you have protected for so long, will be destroyed under my hand. <laughs> he then released many demons from the third eye to destroy and dominate the land. Although Daisha was very shocked about her identity, she looked at her mother and people being attacked by the Demon King and his demons and knew that she had to fight to protect them. However, at this moment, Daisha didn't have her magic sword or her third eye, so the Demon King was able to defeat her easily. I can't give up like this, but I need a new plan to defeat him! She looked around and saw a crystal lamp swinging back and forth. Suddenly, she came up with an idea. Quickly, she picked up a broken piece of her sword and threw it towards the lamp. Although the Demon King was able to dodge it, Daisha was able to steal the orb that held the Queen captive from his hand. Mother, wake up! It's me, Daisha! 
Deja, it seems like the Demon King has returned and attacked eh? me again. I know everything, and now we need to find a way to defeat him. <clears throat> she ran to a locked room at the end of the hallway, but the Demon King caught up with her. <laughs> ha! You foolish child! Why would you willingly trap yourself here, making it easy for me to defeat you? If you're so good, then fight me! The Demon King attempted to cast a spell at Daisha, but he couldn't <gasps> help but notice her confident expression. <laughs> ah, it seems like you want me to destroy the gate behind you. Is there something in there that scares me? Don't try to fool me. Suddenly, the orb containing the Queen's soul flew out of Daisha's hand and taunted the Demon King. Mother! No! I won't spare you! Enraged, the Demon King fired a spell at the orb, but Daisha quickly shielded it with her body. Daisha, let it go! No, I won't! Mom, you have always been the one who worries and takes care of me for so long, so I cannot abandon the duty of being your child for these matters. Moreover, this is my fault for changing my mother's faith without permission. Therefore, I am willing to sacrifice myself for my mother. The Demon King was furious and used his last spell to create a huge explosion to destroy the mother and daughter. However, the door of the room was heavily impacted and collapsed, revealing many shining treasures illuminating towards the third eye of Daisha, making the Demon King gradually fall due to fear of the bright light. Seizing that opportunity, Daisha quickly stood up and used the remaining power of the sword to defeat the Demon King. When Daisha regained her third eye, she quickly ran to the Queen to inquire about her mother's health. Daisha, I'm too tired. Perhaps I cannot pass through this life of door and death anymore. Therefore, my child, please take good care of yourself later. It can't be. I can't let my mother leave me. Please, heavenly beings, save my mother's life. I will exchange it for any price. As soon as Daisha finished speaking, the sun god truly appeared in the hmm. dazzling light. Daisha, through the recent battle, I understand your filial pity for the queen, as well as the motherly <laughs> love of both of you who can live and mm. die for each other. In addition, you have contributed a lot to this kingdom in the past time. Therefore, I agree to extend the queen's lifespan with the condition that Daisha, you will deduct a part of your own lifespan to replace it. In addition, you must strive and continue the journey of demon slaying to protect everyone. I agree! After the Sun God fulfilled his promise, the Queen and Daisha were finally able to be together and live happily ever after.